Imagine life without cells or batteries. No mobile phone, no MP3 player, and unless you can plug in, no laptop, no iPad, no digital camera. If you've seen previous programs in this series, you'll know that the essence of a cell is this. It contains two chemicals, one having a stronger pull on electrons than the other. They're kept in separate compartments, and it's only when you press play that electrons flow, dragged through the external circuit from the reductant to the oxidant. Break the circuit and the flow stops. Whatever the type of cell, the electron flow is always driven by a redox reaction, made up of two half reactions. You'll remember that a dry cell has a zinc anode case, separated from the cathode inside, a paste containing graphite and manganese dioxide. Uri decided to flip things around. He put the anode in the centre, a steel rod with powdered zinc packed around it. Around this, a separator, and then the cathode, a paste of manganese dioxide, powdered graphite and water. An outer steel case connects the cathode to the positive terminal. Now, a problem with the dry cell is that ammonium ions in the electrolyte are acidic, and this can interfere with the reaction. Uri eliminated that problem by making the electrolyte alkaline, using potassium hydroxide. But the real breakthrough idea was to use powdered zinc for the anode. With such tiny particles, the surface area for the reaction was increased massively. In this cell, zinc is oxidised at the anode to form zinc ions, which immediately react with hydroxide ions in the electrolyte to form zinc hydroxide. The overall reaction can be written like this. At the cathode, manganese dioxide is reduced to a different manganese oxide and the other product is hydroxide ions. <laughs>